Hello students, I am Dr. Ruchi Raj, your original guru for prosthodontics. Today's YouTube session is to discuss a 45-day strategy for the upcoming INICT exam. This exam is going to be held in November 2023. And let us start discussing how to prepare for this exam. For those of you who are joining here for the first time, hi, I'm Dr. Ruchi. I was All India Rank 6 in the AIMS May 2015 session. And then I went on to study prosthodontics from AIMS New Delhi. I'm currently your mentor, guide, your original guru for prosthodontics at DBMCI MDS. And today's session is to discuss how you also can crack this particular exam. The INICET, or it stands for Institutes of National Importance, is a very prestigious exam in total. And a rank from such exams will take you to the prestigious institutes of the country to study and pursue your dream branch ahead. So we'll keep today's session very crisp and very small just to discuss what could be your strategy for the upcoming exam. Now, before I begin ahead from here, I would want to tell you today's session is not meant just for people who are already preparing. If you're thinking that I have not yet started my preparation, I don't know anything about how to prepare, just watch today's session and begin somewhere today. I'm sure it will help you for the upcoming INI CET exam. If you're hardworking, you're sincere, and you develop certain goals for the upcoming exam. So without wasting any further time, let us start discussing today. Now, how is INICT different from your NEET MDS? Classically, what we have seen is both of the exams have a similar pattern. They are MCQ-based, computer-based test exams. And uh, the syllabus, or you could say the uh, overall subjects that are there for these two exams are the same only. They are all of the subjects that you have studied through BDS. Then how is it that INICT differs from NEET? Now, if you observe over a period of time, like how people like us or mentors have observed papers over the course of a, probably a decade, what I have seen and observed is these INICT exam or even before that, how they were AIMS exam or PGI exam, these exams are having questions that judge your fundamentals or what are your basics of a particular subject that is being judged through these exams. So you should be very conceptually clear with your subjects, what are the concepts and facts of your subjects, what are the fundamentals or basics of your subjects. Questions will be directed to test your fundamentals. The second thing what we have observed in INICT is that they judge your clinical acumen. What is your clinical understanding? You will be given a case-based scenario. What is your clinical acumen or judgment of this situation? That is something questions are being directed to this particular aspect. These are two ways where I've seen INICT is different from NEET exam. NEET exam consists of some questions or some aspect that revolves around mugging. I'm not saying that is not there in INICT, but INICT primarily is to differentiate the cream of the country from the rest of the students. So some part of the paper would be directed to segregate those cream students from the rest of them. And that is through clinical questions and that is through core concepts. Now, if you are a student who is preparing for INICT for the next session or even after it, you have a room for error. It is not something that is you cannot make a single mistake. You have to target about 140 to 150 questions correct out of the 200 questions that you have. You have a margin of 40 to 50 questions. If you want to be in the top ranks, this is your target area where you should be uh, correct in your exam. Now, what are the general points that we consider for preparation for the upcoming INICT exam? And specifically, when you have only 45 days remaining, I would say go for revision. Do not run after new topics right now. You have to go for revision of the topics. Whatever you have read till now, if you are someone who is already preparing, if you are a post-intern or a repeater, go for revision of what you have already done, whether it is through notes, whether it is through your already solved papers, revise as much as you can. If you're still interested to do something new, 
give only 10 to 15 percent of your entire day's time to it rest everything rest 80 percent 85 percent of your day should be targeted towards revision 45 days i feel now is not the time to start doing newer things you should be targeting revision second very important point now here you should develop a habit of solving now 200 mcq questions daily preferably around the time of your exam. So roughly between 10 a.m. to 1 p.m. Now you're conditioning your mind to solve MCQs and you're priming your mind to solve MCQs during the same time duration. So get into a habit of solving at least 200 MCQs daily. If you feel not, you're not able to solve 200 at a stretch, try to build up your stamina over a period of time. So maybe you might be able to solve 50 or 70 today at, at a stretch. Try to build it up to 200 till your exam comes nearby. This will actually not make you tired or lazy or you would not feel uh, dull while you're solving. You should not have an experience of solving 200 MCQs between the time duration of 10 to 1 p.m. for the first time during your exam. This is something that you should already be seasoned with and you should have a stamina for it. So start working on that. That is a general point that I would suggest to all students who are uh, going for the upcoming exam. Third thing is what I've observed is a lot of students are in the habit of reading till late night and then getting up say about 10 or 11 o'clock in the morning. It is good if it works for you, but as your exam is coming nearby, I would suggest now start developing a habit of getting early. The reason is your body cannot automatically get up early on the day of the exam. You would not feel fresh. Secondly, if you are in a routine habit of waking up at 10 or 11 a.m., you would not feel fresh during the exam hours also. So it is advisable that you start getting early by say 6 a.m. from now onwards. So you're fresher by say morning during the hours of the exams. And that is something that you have to build over a period of time. It won't happen in a week's time or something. So start developing that also in the upcoming 45 days. Another very important point for this exam is now whenever you're reading, try to develop a focus during reading. What do I mean by developing a focus? I've spoken on this before also in my earlier sessions or generally also. What do I mean by developing a focus is when you're reading, no stray thoughts should come to your mind. Initially, it could be only two or five minutes. Over a period of time, develop and extend it. So when you're in the exam, there is no extra random thoughts coming in your mind and you are completely directed and focused and all of your energy is directed towards your questions that you're seeing on the screen. If random stray thoughts do come in your mind right now, when you meditate or probably try to develop a focus while reading, you time yourself and do that. Build it over the upcoming few days and you see there will be a difference. A lot of students, what I've seen is if it is a three-hour exam, they got bored by the end of two hours. Your upcoming few months or what branch you're going to study is going to depend on that. You can't be bored in two hours of your exam. So you should develop a focus for your exam that actually gives you the best output for the time that you're giving. So do that. Another very important point here is that try to stay away from depressing people. I have seen very good students coming in contact with, say, colleagues and friends who may uh, judge their own uh, exam preparation not enough. Even if it's good enough, they are generally not very positive towards their preparation and they would always say, I have not done enough. When we do come in contact with such people, we also start evaluating ourselves in the same uh, line and then we don't feel good about your preparation and the entire day gets wasted like that. Even the mood drops. So I would suggest you, you could probably stay in less contact with such people. Try to be in a better jovial mood throughout the day. So whatever you're doing has the best outcome for you. Now, from now onwards, you have to decide a set of topics or a set of something that you do as a revision in your last week. Last week revision is a game changer. Take it from me. In the entire last week, you are supposed to revise like anything because that is going to make or break your game. So last week's revision is a must for all of you. Very important point here, which I've mentioned is 
previous year topics versus previous year MCQs. Everyone usually would suggest you do not make many mistakes in previous year MCQs or you should not be doing any mistakes in last year questions that are getting repeated. But that is correct. What we see as an evaluation of our paper is the same MCQ may not be repeated, but MCQs come from the same family of topics. So exam is mainly, if you see, it's not an exam of previous year MCQs being repeated. It is previous year topics. So focus on these topics. They are much more important than exactly the MCQ and try to keep your revision surrounding them. Also from now onwards, according to what is your strength and weakness, prepare a last day reading list for yourself. Keep that in mind. What is something that you absolutely cannot remember and keep it for your last day. Prepare a separate notebook, whether it is of numericals or fact-based questions and revise it on the last day. One very important thought over here, which I would say, I personally committed this mistake a lot in my preparation. Do not waste time on controversial questions. The reason being controversial question at the end of the day is one question. I don't know or I'm not sure whether it will come in the exam, but it takes a lot of hours from us in your discussion. My uh, suggestion to you is put the question across to your mentor. Listen to what answer they are supposed to, they are giving you. Read something around the topic and then go with an open mind in your exam. Evaluate the question that comes on your screen and mark what is best. If you are finding it difficult on that question, the majority would also find it difficult over there. So in the end, it, it is not something that might become a game changer for the exam. And lastly, give as many grand tests as possible. That will help you understand where is your level of preparation and what you must do or improvise for in the upcoming days. So these are some general points which are applicable for all exams, but specifically now since we have 45 days remaining for our upcoming exam. Now, I did a thorough evaluation of the past two papers, the INICET November 2022 and May 2023 paper. Now, if we do a subject-wise distribution of importance of subjects, this particular slide is very important here. If you want, you could take a screenshot of it here and keep it to yourself. Just observe the trends of the questions. In November 2022, three subjects, Prosto, public health dentistry, pedodontics, cumulatively, they had more than, say, 70 questions here. Out of 200, if more than 70 questions are coming from one topic, that is almost one third uh, out of three subjects. That is one third of your entire paper. So that is how trends are there. But if you observe in the next year, Prostho came down. And Prostho was left in the last INICET exam to only eight questions. But the general trends that you observe between both of them is what? Focus nowadays is on clinical subjects, clinical final year dental subjects. Now you have an advantage here. If you have read well through BDS and if you have gone through all of our videos and your concepts are clear about these subjects, generally these concepts would not require a last week revision. So you are already well placed for your exam. But the idea here is to tell you that these are your final year BDS subjects that are subjects of importance. And you begin with subjects of importance first and then come towards the subjects that are less likely to be asked these days. Of course, these are just trends. Trends can change in any exam. But we can take some cue from our trends to see what works best for us. And when we have limited time, we could strategize accordingly. So focus here on your final year BDS subjects, then probably go towards subjects like oral pathology, anatomy, something like that. And then to rest other subjects over here. Screenshot these slides. They would be very helpful to you. It has taken us quite a some time to prepare these slides and uh, this is a very useful material for you to strategize and improvise yourself over here. Now coming to the exact strategy, how to use your 45 days. Now I have two plans here for you. First is for beginners, someone who has not prepared, someone who has barely touched the textbooks but has read through BDS nicely and probably has a basic understanding of the subject, but has not completed the syllabus as such. 
students who are interns whose entire day goes through the clinical posting and then they only have uh, the evening time for reading or just who are freshly passed out post interns. Your 45 days could be divided into three parts, a 30 day initial reading and you need two revisions, a 10 day revision and a five day revision. Now, who are already repeaters, who have finished the subjects maybe once or even twice, or who are already seasoned students who know what they are doing exactly and just need a very focused guidance or a correct guidance for preparation, my advice to you here would be go for a 35-day plus a 10-day strategy. I feel one revision would be enough for you. That can be over a period of 10 days. Of those 10 days, you can again subcategorize into the revision strategy of what you could do for the last day and what you could do for the initial seven, eight days of your revision. So there's a difference between these two plans. The main difference is for beginners, interns, or post interns, or generally who are not very confident of their preparation, I have incorporated two revisions here a 10 day revision and a five day revision. Two revisions are essential because what you are reading, you, are, you should be able to recall. But students who have already revised and completed the subjects and who are fine tuning the preparation, I suggest go for an in depth reading of 35 days and then revise the entire thing in the next 10 days. That is how it goes. Let us now discuss this in details. So, strategy number one a 30 10 5 day strategy. Who is this directed for? As I said, beginners, interns, post interns who are fresh into the preparation arena, who are a little skeptical of what to do, who are maybe not knowing exactly what to do, you could begin with this strategy. Now, what is your phase one of preparation? Phase one is your first 30 days of preparation. You could begin it from today itself. What you're going to do? Cover all 19 subjects here. Go through the reading of 19 subjects. I have a timetable and a schedule for you. Don't worry. I'm not randomly giving you advices here. We have prepared a schedule for you. So aim is to cover all 19 subjects and clear your concepts while reading these subjects. Make your own notes if you have not made or if you have made notes, then go through your notes. That will actually fast pace your reading. Now, I'll give you one tip here. When you have your handwritten notes for any subjects, it makes revision faster. In contrast to you writing notes in any textbook or in any other book, it will take you some time through to skim through those notes and probably find what is relevant for you. But if you have a handwritten notebook for you, the revision process becomes very easy. So that is a small tip or suggestion for you. Try to prepare your own handwritten notes, watching our videos, maybe how we write and teach you simultaneously you could prepare your notes also solve q bank and previous year questions we have a 12000 mcq errorless q bank you could solve that q bank and all previous year questions and keep your focus on clinical questions more simultaneously maintain a numerical notebook for you since you are new with numerical questions here, you would not be able to remember them in one go. So maintain a separate numerical notebook for you that you could revise towards the end of it. Now we see a lot of image-based questions also asked these days. My suggestion to you is that if you're finding particularly some topics that are coming very frequently, just Google it up or see it in your textbook. Just spare two minutes of your time and see that particular image. This is how you develop your own knowledge bank of the different topics and subtopics also. Just watch in images when you're opening a textbook or just Google up something. If you see a particular rural pathology uh, topic and you want to see its histologic slide, just Google it, appreciate what the changes are there in this slide and keep it in your mind. You can't actually go through an image-based textbook or something at once, it will be very confusing. But if you do it in small pockets like these, you are eventually building a knowledge base for yourself. So that is another suggestion. So what is phase one? Phase one is directed to cover all subjects, mainly your clinical subjects. Go from the subject that is something that you are comfortable with and then transition towards your difficult subjects. That is the way you tackle them. Now, when you're done one month from today, say next 20th, what do you do? Begin with phase two of your preparation. Phase two is your first revision. In this first revision, I'll advise you, go through your notes. You have your handwritten notes ready now. Go through your notes and read your numericals. 
read your fact based questions and revise only your notes do not read anything else do not do anything else here keep solving your gts keep solving question papers here but apart from that whatever textual reading you are doing or whatever uh, 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 say um, information based reading you are doing do it through your notes and phase 3 of your preparation which is the last 5 days it is your second revision again here what do you do we have a section on youtube for discussing most important topics of ini cet you can open up the dpmci channel and go through the uh, playlist where we are discussing the most important topics of each subject i would suggest you to go through those high yield topics and uh, say i'll give you an example i consider of pros to vertical dimension facebook troubleshooting in complete dentures these are topics from which questions come like anything in all papers so why not do that topic completely very well and get everything solved from it i should not leave one question from that particular topic that is how you build a topic list for yourself and then you can go through those sessions they are completely free on youtube here on dbmci and that you revise in your second phase read your mnemonics remember your facts go through your numericals and keep solving some mcq so that your pace of solving mcqs is maintained that is your strategy 1 for beginners interns post interns now i'll say something which uh, you may not even agree with me but i'll still suggest you that if you are someone who has not even turned one single page of a mcq book i would still suggest go by this strategy and appear confidently for the 45 for your upcoming ini ct exam after following this for 45 days do i tell you that you will get a guaranteed rank i think the chances are slim but what it helps you is is that you have covered your syllabus here in 45 days this prepares you for the next neat exam which is upcoming it prepares you for the next ini ct exam that is coming so you begin somewhere our goal here for beginners is you begin somewhere in your preparation by doing this so try it out and let us know how it works for you now strategy number 2 these are for my already seasoned students students who know how to prepare students who know what they are doing they just need to fine tune their preparation for these students what i suggest is go for a thorough for 35 days of phase 1 cover everything from all subjects that you can you will have your handwritten notes by now you would have a lot of concepts that are already clear something that you are still not understanding go through the videos of it understand your concepts if you still feel something is missing make up your notes and write them do not go into the trap of reading textbooks if you feel that uh, let me read textbooks cover to cover now is not the time so don't fall into that trap cover all subjects here in 35 days solve your q banks whatever you have already bookmarked what you feel that you are not able to remember from q bank or previous year questions solve that over here focus on clinical scenario based questions something that judges your clinical acumen and you would have a numerical notebook here if you don't have start making it today for yourself now the last 10 day revision is you are getting only one revision over here i would suggest keep last two days separate like i suggested in the beginning prepare a last day list for yourself by now you know what you are weak at some students are weak in pcd some students are weak in anatomy some students are weak in biostatistics also so you know yourself what you are weak at your last two days would have a list of topics that you are going to do and your last day list is should be ready with you just do that on the last two days your initial eight days you are solving everything that you have bookmarked which you are still not able to remember you are going through numericals mnemonics tables here most importantly you should be going through tables charts and image based questions this is something that i have not advised our beginners but i'm telling you over here you are already seasoned students i ex i expect that you might be clear with your concepts now what differentiates you from other students is this when you're sure of tables values charts flow charts image based questions i think you are then very well prepared for your exam so go with that mindset try to develop a focus you should not feel tired for 3 hours during the exam your focus should be on point from the beginning to the end of your exam now 
the 30 day or 35 day whatever is your strategy or whichever segment you fall in this is just a tentative schedule that we have made for you for your first trading if you wake up by say six o'clock and you're ready by 7 a.m you can start with subject one which could be subject of your basic sciences most students find problem with anatomy and we have excellent lectures of Ashwini sir of anatomy you can go through them also so subject one basic sciences start reading it 7 to 10 a.m 10 to 1 p.m like i advised you solve mcqs get into that frame of mind of solving mcqs here take a break at 1 p.m 1 to 2 is your lunch time. It hardly takes you to lunch 10 minutes, 15 minutes. Relax for the next 45 minutes over there. Don't look at your mobile. Don't uh, go through Instagram and stuff. Just relax and probably uh, cool down during this period. 2 to 4 p.m. When the tempo slightly fall down, take a clinical subject. Something that you already know, something that you don't need to memorize, something that judges your clinical acumen. 2 to 4 p.m. Take a clinical subject to read. Four to five, I would suggest have some tea, coffee, whatever wakes you up and after a nap. So take a good power nap. All of us know the eight minute power nap that is there in three idiots. Uh, if you are able to do that, it actually works wonder. People who work extreme hours in the day, even doctors take power naps in lounges. So try that if it works for you. Take a power nap of a good 30-40 minutes, freshen up with tea or coffee and then you're prepared for the next segment. Whenever you take a break, at the end of it, begin as if you're beginning in the morning. You have to make yourself feel that I'm fresh here. If you already start counting, I've studied these many hours, you would not be able to go ahead. So probably that is why we have incorporated breaks for you to give you that uh, difference in between. You're not continuously studying here, right? 5 to 6.30, I would suggest if you want, watch videos through the app, whatever videos you like, something that you're lagging at, watch those videos. And then from 6.30 to 8 p.m., on the basis of what you have watched, you could solve your previous year questions and MCQs here. 8 p.m. standard dinner time for everyone. I should suggest you don't go beyond it. It will make you sleepy also at night. Post dinner is something that I leave to you. Every student's preparation strategy is different. You cannot have the same thing applicable to all students. So customize it to your needs. See what you're lagging at. Evaluate your paper. If I give you one advice is whatever tests you're appearing for, take out 15 minutes and evaluate your paper. See what you're constantly making mistakes in. Presently, I teach PROSTO and I love teaching RPD. But when I was a student myself uh, appearing for these exams, I used to make a lot of mistakes in RPD. I evaluated it myself and saw that these were my mistakes. And eventually, I had to go to my crackens and textbooks to understand and clear my concepts. So when you scrutinize and criticize your own mistakes and see what can help you, just make a small plan of one to two hours for yourself post dinner that are targeting those mistakes and needs of yours. And I think you can wind off by 11 p.m. and that should call off your day. Right. So this is a nice day schedule for you that you can continue, even customize it for yourself as your exam comes nearby. Now, with DBMCI MDS, we already have an INI CET power plan. And the power plan is giving you what is the most essential thing, which is the previous paper, a fully solved May INI CET paper of 2023. Usually, we see such books and papers only would cost you maybe four, five hundred rupees. But here you have grant test also with you. So you have a total of five grant tests, which I feel are excellent here with solutions. We all faculties have made these tests ourselves. We have gone through all questions and uh, we have edited everything. We have edited the explanations and what could be the correct information to you for these grant tests has been uh, made for all made by all of our original gurus. The best part of these grant tests is that it gives you an all India ranking. The questions are according to the latest pattern, but when you have an all India ranking, it shows you where you are standing. And even if your rank is somewhere down below, at least you have an idea where your preparation is. So a very well-rounded prepare that has been uh, suited to how INICT exams are has been prepared by all of us cumulatively. 
and you get access to mentorship with Dr. Imani, who is the academic director here. You have a full six month validity of this plan. You get your past paper also. And this costs you maybe probably less than a pizza right now. So solve as many papers as you can. Uh, get hold of the past paper and take advantage of mentorship with all the finest gurus and mentors that you have here. That is just something that I wanted to add. And this is the INICET power plan. You can go to the eGurukul app and you can access and purchase it for yourself. With this, I would just want to conclude today's YouTube session here. As always, it is all very nice interacting with all of our lovely students. And you have any comments, queries, questions, any suggestions for us, please put them in the comment box below. I would come back and uh, answer your queries. You could take help of all the free resources that are there on DBMC MBS YouTube channel on Instagram. And generally, I wish all of you a very fruitful preparation and I wish all of you come out with very good ranks in the upcoming exam. If you have any suggestions, queries, feel free to ask us. Take uh, help of all of the resources that we have and I hope all of you do best. So best of luck for your upcoming exam. This is Dr. Ruchi and uh, lovely interacting with all of you here.